Hi, I'm Yun Jun, presenting deformable neural radiance fields. This paper talks about photorealistically reconstructing a non rigidly deforming scene using photos videos captured casually from mobile phones. The applications of this paper has the increased accessibility and applications of 3D modeling technology. However, the challenges lies in non rigidity where humans are in unable to stand perfectly still. On the other hand, challenging materials like hair, glasses, and earrings are difficult to reconstruct. Prior work on non-rigid reconstruction, there are two main methods, namely neural volumes and voxel. Neural volumes demonstrate a 3D representation of a deformable scene using a voxel grid and warp field regressed from a scene head. While Oxflow uses a flow field to represent 3D human motion over time using an ordinary differential equation. However, these methods cannot handle a rigidly deforming scene, as shown on the examples in the third and fourth column. The contribution of this paper is that this paper is the first method that generates novel views of humans with photorealistic quality. While prior work cannot handle non rigidly deforming scenes, this paper presents a canonical nerve model that serves as a template for all the observations. To handle the deformation, it develops a deformation field for each observation frame that warps 3D points in the reference frame of an observation into the reference frame of the canonical model. Results show that this method renders high fidelity reconstructions and refilter realistic novel views of humans using a cell phone capture. The general background is that uh, NERF takes as input uh, 3D coordinates and a uh, viewing angle and try to map it to a color and a density, while the NERF in the wild model denoted a NERF A takes an additional input, the appearance code, and map it to the color and density. While using NERF in the well model, these two images are shown on the left and the right, bounded by red, orange, and blue. The two points should intersect in the 3D space. However, NERF, according to NERF model results, these two points do not intersect. So when we unroll the operation, we can view this as there are two observation frames, each for frame 1 and frame 2. And these two frames should be mapped into a canonical frame where these two points should eventually intersect, as shown in this figure. So we describe the problem setting first. We want the input coordinates of Nerf in the Well, uh, Nerf in the well method, because this paper builds upon Nerf in the Well appearance model. And then we want the input x to be mapped to a canonical frame coordinates were denoted by t of x and omega i, where t is an observation to canonical mapping, while the omega i is the per, latent, per frame learned latent code. So we visualize the process as shown in this illustration, where we have an observation frame, and for, and for each ray, we can sample points denoted at x, y, and z. We want to map it to the canonical frame coordinate x prime, y prime, and z prime through a deformation field. And in this paper, we use a multi-layer perceptual network to model the deformation. And we want this deformation field to be applied uh, applicable to different inputs. So we also take as input an additional latent deformation code. The deformation field is modeled by SD3, which consists of a rotation, a pivot point, followed by a transition. So that for each point x, we can map it using the equation, the second equation as shown on the left hand side, right hand side to the canonical frame coordinates. So the multi-layer perceptual network essentially maps the input x and omega i to v, s, and t. After the mapping, each point will be mapped to the canonical frame, and those fr those coordinates will be used as input to the nerve in the wild appearance model. The deformation field has ambiguities that make optimization more challenging. So it is crucial to introduce some priors that lead to a more plausible solution. In this paper, the adopt elastic regularization, which has, which has been shown uh, effective in geometry processing and physics simulation to model non-rigid deformation. Specifically, they want to achieve local, local rigidity. 
To achieve this, they compute the Jacobian of each point x that describes the best linear approximation of the transformation at each point. They can therefore control the local behavior of the deformations through the Jacobian of the deformation field. They first compute the SVD on J, and then work with the singular values of J and measures its deviation from the identity. So we can penalize this constraint using an elastic loss function as shown here. Although humans are mostly rigid, there are some movements which can break our assumption of local rigidity, such as facial expressions, which locally stretch and compress our skin. To further enhance the robustness, uh, they choose to remap the elastic energy defined above using a robust loss function, where the rho is the German McClure robust error loss. And this kind of loss function reduces the influence of outliers during training. The deformation field is unconstrained and therefore everything is free to move around. So they optionally add a regularization term which prevents the background from moving. As shown in this equation where for each point in the background we apply the deformation field on it, it should remain the same. So in addition to keeping the background points from moving, this regularization also has the benefits of aligning the observation coordinate frame to the canonical coordinate frame. Another important aspect of NERF is that the positional encoding which maps a point in R3 to a point in R3 plus 6M where M uh, is the frequency band. We know that higher M can have higher frequency details, can model high higher frequency details, but may result in overfitting and modeling image noise. While having a smaller M, may not, the model might not be able to model deformations which require high frequency details. To achieve this, they adopt a course to find deformation regularization where the frequency band is uh, gradually increasing as the training iter iteration goes meaning that they add a term uh, w in front of each sine and cosine term where the, a the omega is uh, controlled by the alpha defined on the bottom right where t is the number of iteration namely when t increases omega, omega will also increase and higher frequency bands will be included as well to collect the data uh, we, we collect a, a sequence of selfie photos or a selfie video where, while the user is standing mostly still. We first filter out the blurry frame by using the variance of the Laplacian. And then we use structure from motion method to compute camera poses for each image and intrinsic calibration. To further identify which region correspond to foreground and which region correspond to background, we use an existing foreground segmentation network to filter out features on the subject. Experimental results show that mm, this paper compares favorably against nerve and neural volumes across different scenes. And in the second block, they disable one component at a time, showing the ablation results. And, re and the number shows that each component has contribution to the final performance, while well, disabling each of them will suffer from performance loss. This figure further demonstrates the advantage of NERFI, where given the training view as shown in the first column and the ground truths as novel views as shown in the second column, NERF or neural volume method in the fifth and sixth columns cannot render photorealistically novel views while the NERFI method in the third column can render photorealistic results. Another example is that this paper is able to recover details such as hair. On the other hand, this method is also able to recover the wrinkles on t-shirt as well as other details such as the glass frame. So as shown in the third column, those geometries are recovered accurately. To further demonstrate that their formulation is not limited to humans, they apply their algorithm to dog. As shown in the fourth column, their method is able to render accurate geometry. So this paper is able to render novel views of humans with photorealistic quality. 
and the details such as hairs are recovered. Experimental results show that this method outperforms nerve and neural volumes across different scenarios, while the formulation is not limited to a uh, human, meaning that it does not rely on domain specific, specific priors such as the dog example. While there are some open issues remain unaddressed, for example, how can the model handle larger deformations that include full body motions? And what would happen if the captured data is under lighting variations? What if what background is also moving? And how much data is needed? Namely, what is the density of capture required for this method? A quick recap on the contribution. This paper presents a method that generates novel views of humans with photorealistic quality, and they introduce a canonical nerve model that serves as a template for all the observations. A deformation field for each observation that works 3D points in the reference frame of an observation into the reference frame of the canonical model. Results show that this method renders high fidelity reconstruction and photorealistic novel views of humans using a cell phone capture. Thanks for your attention.